Jet sponsors coverage of the Silverstone Classic. In 2014 marks the centenary of the legendary Italian Mark Maserati and there's an incredible collection of jewel dropping and gorgeous Maseratis here at Silverstone for the public to take a look at, including some very rare examples. Alfieri, your father Ernesto was one of the founders of Maserati, so it must be a very special moment for you and the whole family to see Maserati reach its centenary. Yes, uh, of course. My father was help to Alfieri who founded uh, one century ago the company and uh, since uh, the early unfortunately early death of Alfieri in 1932 he has been the one who has designed all the Maserati cars uh, racing cars up to uh, 1947 and then all the Oscar Maserati brothers car and uh, this car were the very successful one all over the world this rather beautiful machine behind me is a Maserati 250F and it was a very important car for the mark. It was behind the wheel of a car just like that that Sterling Moss won the 1956 Monaco Grand Prix and the following year Juan Manuel Fangio scored the second of Maserati's two Formula One World Championships. Oh yeah, I mean in 54 I bought and managed to buy one because Ferrari wouldn't sell their cars and Neubauer, Mercedes-Benz had said, look, we to my father when he went to see him, I uh, said, we've seen how well he can do in a pretty awful car. We want to see what he can do in something competitive. And so we went and bought a 250F, just, just the same as that. And absolutely wonderful. Royal Automobile Club's Woodcut Trophy for pre-56 sports cars had another packed field. Victory went to Frederick Wakeman and Patrick Blakeney-Edwards. There was also a great drive by Jackie Oliver and Gary Pearson in their Ferrari 250 GT Berlinetta that claimed a lights to flag victory in the pre-63 GT Tourist Trophy race. Both races in the Jack Brabham Trophy for pre-66 Grand Prix cars, fittingly enough, were won by one of the great man's own cars. It was a Brabham BT4 in the hands of Jason Minshaw that claimed both victories. The Maserati Centenary Trophy races for pre-61 Grand Prix cars reflected the first decade of World Championship racing at Silverstone. Philip Walker took both victories in his Lotus 16, completing a great weekend for him at Silverstone. Steve McQueen did his bit to make the Mustang famous and another film of his also added to the legendary status of the Le Mans 24 hour race and that's where these Group C cars made their name. Beautiful summer's evening here at Silverstone and the sights and sounds of Le Mans because next on track, the Group C cars. The field led by Bob Berridge in his Mercedes C11. Right alongside him, Steve Tandy in the Nissan RC90. As away they go, Katsu Kubota in the low downforce red, white and blue Nissan immediately sneaks through into second place. And there is the Mercedes C11 up front. Period rear view screen giving him a view of the battle behind. Oh, looping it round, Christoph Dansenborg, the Belgian in the V12 XJR8. Full the Mon spec look at the side panels over the rear wheels, low drag nose and wing. Wow. Takes me back to my youth. Bob Berridge out front in this 1989 Sauber C11, driven by the Mercedes Junior team, Michael Schumacher, Carl Bendlinger, and Heinz Harold Frensen. to Kubota's turbo Nissan, reeling in the Mercedes. These comfortably the quickest cars here this weekend with the lights on, heading into the evening, echoing Le Mans races of the late 1980s when Group C rivaled Formula One for glamour, glory, and drawing in the big name manufacturers and drivers, of course. Grand Prix drivers then very often raced in Group C.
Replay of the first lap, Christoph Danzelberg in the XJR8, discovering how much torque is available from the V12 in the mere flex of your toes. Leader Bob Berridge in the Mercedes under real pressure from experienced historic racer Katsu Kubota in his Nissan R90 CK. They are pacing away from the third place Spice and Kubota looking to the inside and through he goes and Berridge was never going to turn in there. Mercedes on the inside again now but look at the big black marks as the twin turbos chime in and the Nissan just lights up its tyres squirming for grip. That car that year, 1990, had over 1,100 horsepower in qualifying. Mark Blundell, the brave man who set the all-time lap record at Le Mans in his R90 CK. Fortunately, Nissan never went on to win the race. Mercedes didn't in 1989, the year of Bob Berridge's car either. Third place battle, Steve Tandy on board, on a charge. The British GT ace closing in on Michael Lyons in the 1992 Gephardt. And the Nissan all over him as they come into the Beckett's S's. Great opportunity to use the horsepower of the Nissan. Oh, and he loops it round. That's a mistake. And Tandy avoids damage, and somebody was on the grass there. And that will have been the following Sean Lynn as the Nissan takes too much curb on the inside, bounces out of control, and the gap closes. Ooh, that was close. Lead battle and Bob Berridge in the Mercedes again on the attack. Katsu Kubota is going to have to really rein in. The Nissan runs a little wide and that was an open goal. Berridge goes gratefully straight through, brakes glowing. The Nissan incidentally the first Le Mans racer to use carbon brakes. Bob Berridge now with the lead of the race once more. Can he run away though and hide? The Nissan with all that power may just have worked its tyres a little too hard. Arguably one of the most beautiful Group C cars, 1984 Lancia LC2. That's Rupert Cleverly closing in on Eric Rickenback of the Swiss in the green Cheetah. Well, that was built in Lausanne, Switzerland by Chuck Graviger and his team, so a very rare car indeed. The Lancia Martini always on par with the Porsches at the front of a Group C field. The final hurrah of Group C was the three and a half litre era, the Ford HB Grand Prix engine in this Jaguar XJR14. The car designed by Ross Braun, driven in period by Martin Brundle and Derek Warwick. And at the moment, Gareth Evans, who's driving it, has been caught by Aaron Scott in the 1986 Spice. The brakes working just as hard as the engines and the drivers here in the dusk at Silverstone. Well, after his spin earlier on, Steve Tandy, third place now in traffic. That's Hendrik Lindbergh in the Dower 962, the Tic Tac sponsored car. And he needs to get a move on because he's under pressure. Closing stages of the race. Mike Donovan is closing in the Spice SE88, and there he is. And he's got a real chance to get onto the podium. Closing right in on the newer Nissan, and Steve Tandy under enormous pressure from Mike Donovan. Spice has always went so well here in the 1,000 kilometer races at Silverstone. Looks like another podium might be on the cards. He's got a great run coming on to the start finish straight, the old start finish straight. Leighton House Porsche won't be a problem. Group C2 Spice of Scott Cowper is out of the way and through already has gone Mike Donovan. Steve Tandy just couldn't get the drive off the corner. Change for third. Bob Berridge in the Mercedes, heading towards the chequered flag. He's shaken off Katsu Kubota's Nissan, and the Mercedes races to victory here at the Silverstone Classic. A great win for Bob Berridge. The battle for third is still alive. Mike Donovan in the spice just in front of Steve Tandy, who can almost sniff the champagne on the podium, but he runs out wide and doesn't quite make it. It is going to be Mike Donovan in third and Tandy in fourth. Well, confirmation of the result, Mike Donovan third in the spy, second for Katsu Kubota, but Bob Berridge's Mercedes on the top of the pile. What's it like driving around here in these dust conditions? It's fantastic, you know, I, I, I say that it's a great privilege to drive these cars, you know, there's not many people in the world ever driven them, and um, they're just fantastic cars to drive, very rewarding, very forgiving, you know, very fast. Of course, this event is just about racing. It's also about rocking as well. And here on the main stage, there are going to be some classic bands to keep the party going well into the night. Silverstone, let me hear you make some noise! 
Friday was full of classics and the stars of the show were 60s legends Canned Heat, who were back on the road again, still rocking the crowd. Then Saturday was totally eclipsed by the mighty voice of Bonnie Tyler, who kept everyone singing along. Still to come, Silverstone echoes to the sounds of the wonderful historic Formula One cars. See you after the break. Hey baby, that's the boogie. Jet sponsors coverage of the Silverstone Classic.